Hi everyone, Empress Justice here with the weekly reading from the 17th of September to the 23rd of September 2023. Now, um, as I'm filming this, my laptop is packed because I'm going to London for a couple of days due to my mother being sick. Um, prayers have already been sent out for her. Um, she's doing better than she was when she came in because when she came in, it was really bad. Um, her oxygen was dropping. And um, yeah, it, it, it's it's still serious, but it's not, it's not insurmountable, if that makes sense. So thank you for all your prayers and well wishes. That's first off. The second part of this is that uh, we've got two events happening. First is quite minor. It's the first quarter. Okay, so we've got the first quarter moon coming up in Moolah, and that will take place on the 22nd of September 2023. I may do my full moon reading then, my full, full moon reading in um, Uttarabhadrapada in Pisces. Um, so on the Moolah Sagittarius first quarter, I may do the full moon reading. That's on the 22nd of September, 2023. And then on top of that, the autumn equinox is coming up. So maybe like on the same day, like maybe on the 22nd, I might do uh, a pick a card reading or I might do the pick a card reading on the 21st. Um, if all goes well, then I will come back home on the 18th. So during that time, I could, I could make a start on the autumn equinox readings um, because I feel like it's important to celebrate the autumn equinox. And plus I have a, I kind of have a soft spot for it anyway, because Halloween is around the corner. Oh, thank God. Oh, but yes, thank you for the well wishes with regards to my mother. I'm going to be leaving for London today. So whilst it's early, I wanted to get this week weekly reading out the way um so yeah that's it that's it uh thank you for the well wishes from my mother and um please keep them coming okay so without further ado let's get started on the beginning of the week so for the beginning of the week sunday and monday the 17th and eight, 17th and 18th we have the ascendant in utara palguni in leo okay and we also have um the seven of discs from the top to row. We also have the nine of swords. So we've got failure and we've got cruelty. Cruelty is the reserve of the people who... There they go. Rotted hole, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh my God, that's... <laughs> All right. Let me begin again. We got the begin. <laughs> we got the beginning of the week, Sunday and Monday, the seventeenth and eighteenth of September. Okay, and we've got the seven of discs and the nine of swords. Failure and cruelty. Cruelty is the reserve of people who fail. What do I mean by that? I mean that throughout September, many of us have experienced getting what we want. It's just not in the way that we wanted it. Now, there are those of us who are grateful for what we've got. Um, and there are those of us who are not grateful for what we've got. I explained all of this in September, the September 2023 reading. So if you guys want to check that out, you can. But basically what I said was that there are two distinct camps. There are people who are getting what they want and they're recognizing that and they're rolling with it. And there are people who are not getting what they want. Well, there are people who are getting what they want that don't recognise they're getting what they want. So they resort to cruelty in order to make up for the things that they perceive themselves not to be getting. Because not only do they want to get what they want, they want to get what they want in their way. But I've told people for the longest time, you got to pick one. Either you get what you want but it's in the way that spirit wants it or it's in the way that other people want it or other people and spirit get what they want 
but that's going to be, be in the way that you want it. So you've got two choices. What I've never experienced or what is a rare experience is that people get what they want and get it in the way that they want it. It can happen, but that's actually very rare. In order for you to get what you want and get it in the way that you want it, you have to be in line with spirit's desires. And quite often many people aren't. And that's especially the case with some people at the start of this week. Now, the people who are grateful, the people who understand what's going on, they are not necessarily at the mercy of vindictive people, but they are the target of vindictive people. They are the target of ungrateful people. But what will happen is that because of the mental stability of the former, the latter won't get very far. They will become more vicious and they will become more desperate. I found that. Um, many of you will find that. They'll become more vicious and become more desperate. But the people on the former camp, they will most likely be, you know, they will be more clear-headed, honestly. And because they're more clear-headed and because they have a focus and because they have a purpose, they're less likely to be caught up in any pettiness or any vindictiveness. So this is not an easy couple of days for anybody, really, because both sides are going through a lot. But the first, the people in the first half, instead of seeing this as something to mourn or something to be upset over, if they are getting what they want, but they're not getting it in the way that they want it, they see the not wants as seeds to later get what they want in life. It's, it's weird. It's like they see the misfortunes of their lives as seeds to be planted for something fruitful to grow or something you know, something to blossom. So there are those who see failure or so-called failure as seeds to be grown. And then there are those who see it as cruelty. Those who see it as cruelty will offload that cruelty onto other people, but without much success. So that's the first part of um, the first part of this week. That's Sunday and Monday. There are some notes that I want to read to you um, with regards to this these first two days right so we've got apprentice wanting to earn more emotionally unavailable long-standing team luxurious vision so whilst things seem to be chaotic on the outside on the inside a lot of us are maintaining emotional detachment because with Uttara, Uttara Palguni's ascendant on Sunday well we're coming into Sunday the first part well when we come into the week it will be Uttara, Uttara Palguni ascendant in Leo so there are all these really big, volatile feelings running around. But because our minds are more pragmatic and more practical, what will happen is that we will take these emotions and we will apply them towards practical behavior. So as much as we may be feeling a whole storm of emotions on the inside, it's very, very likely that we're going to take, those storm of, take that storm of emotions and instead try to apply it to something physical or apply it to something practical or make strategic moves, right? Especially the, like I said, the people who are grateful for the lessons that they've been bestowed with, right? So it's a weird couple of days. It's not disastrous. It's not good. It's certainly not a good couple of days from, you know, from Sunday and Monday but it is a test of character. And there are those of you that I'm reading for that will definitely pass that test of character because you've already made up your mind that you're going to accept your situation and you're going to make the most of it. And because of that, you're planting seeds now that will grow into something fruitful and will grow into something abundant and beautiful, into something that you can use basically. So yeah, it's a weird couple of days. It's um, it's not good. It's not a good couple of days. Sunday and Monday is um, is not good, but it's not entirely bad either. It's not disastrous. Okay. So that was the Sunday and Monday, and now I've got to get into 
Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. All right. So for the midweek, we've got the five of cups, disappointment, and we have got the emperor. Okay. So first off, much of what I was saying for the first couple of days is um, it's more concentrated and it's more tangible in midweek. The disappointments that we've experienced from the beginning of the week, we will use them to become more organized and more, you know, we will use it to lay a proper foundation as to how things are going to be organized, how things are going to be run. Um, even people who are really, like inclined towards being organized selves, hold on. Sorry about that. Even those who are not normally inclined towards being organized will find themselves um, suddenly thinking of the bigger picture. They're like, yeah, like there are things going on that I really don't like. There are things going on that I could live without. But there is an opportunity here to see where the vulnerabilities are in my life and where the vulnerabilities are in uh, some of the people that surround me. So it's a chance to look at your vulnerabilities, not only of yourself and of your emotions, but of your surroundings. So it's an opportunity for you to see where you could be vulnerable and to strategically operate on that knowledge, okay? So whilst you know, you're not entirely secure for the midweek. We're not entirely secure. We may have a greater feeling of security at the end of all this. We may have a greater sense of not our own power. That's the, those are the wrong words to use. But we may have a greater sense of um, priorities. We may have a greater sense of, you know, exactly what's important. We have a greater sense of exactly what we're supposed to be doing okay so it's a very sort of um pragmatic few days the, this, these next few days we're going to take our disappointments we're going to you know well especially the ones who are grateful we're going to take our disappointments and we're going to ensure that we can make the most of them set a solid foundation upon which to build things that we do want in our lives because once the vulnerabilities are taken care of it gives you room to build prettier things on top of the foundation. It gives you room to build a home, not only build a home, but furnish it. So it's like, you, you know, again, we're using this as an opportunity um, to ultimately get better, to ultimately better ourselves, you know? So, yeah. That was for midweek. And now I've got to read the notes for the midweek. All right. So here are the notes for the midweek. We've got missing a chance, regret, hypnosis leader, subconscious reprogramming, end of a fling, relationship deemed unsatisfying, husband, business owning couple, stable relationship. You know what I get out of that? What I get out of that is... Um, if you're in a relationship and you feel like things have been really casual and you know you've had fun but you feel like the more the more important parts of life are being ignored during this midweek you're going to be like this isn't it for me anymore i don't want to live you know i don't want to live a life in which i'm in love with someone or i'm with someone that doesn't take life seriously if i'm going to be in this then I've got to be with somebody who has a plan. And that's not even just people who are taken. It's people who are, who are single. People who are single might think to themselves, given the vulnerabilities in my life that I'm trying to protect, given the vulnerabilities in um, my surroundings that I'm trying to protect, I need somebody who is going to add to that protection and not take away from it. And this is especially the case with anyone with feminine energy or with who's female. I'm protecting certain vulnerabilities in my life and I'm going to need somebody in my life who is able to do this, who is able to strengthen the foundations that I'm laying so that I can build something beautiful on top of it. Right. So 
whether you're single or whether you're taken, you have a plan for your life, okay? You have a plan for your life and you want to ensure that even if, you know, the relationship that you're in doesn't have the same plans as you do, you want them to have a plan anyway. You want them to have a plan of action. You want them to have something to do. You want them to have something in their lives that they're working on. Because it's wonderful to live in, you know, to bask in the glow of the honeymoon period. But now a lot of you want to get serious. And I feel like honesty is key. You, you need to communicate that. Communicate it lovingly. Don't get me wrong. But during the midweek, ambitions are not high, but strong. And those ambitions need to be communicated to the people that you're with, even if it's just friendships. You know what I mean? Even if it's just family, it's like, I got plans for my life, right? If you ain't got a plan, I can't rock with you. I can't rock with you. If you haven't got a plan, I can't, I just can't do it. You need to have a plan for your life or we can't, we can't hang. You understand? So that's the type of commitment that a lot of us are looking at. We're not looking at marriage. We're not looking at, um, you know, anything to do with moving in or anything like that. Do you have a plan? I can't believe I'm quoting Steve Harvey. Jesus Christ. Do you have a plan? That's what matters. Do you have a plan for your life? So, again, disappointments and recognising where the disappointments are, they lead us to, towards build a strong in, stronger foundations. Again, we saw glimpses of that on Sunday and Monday, but on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, that's when it especially becomes palpable. So that was for the midweek. And yeah, during the midweek, it's Vishaka, okay? Vishaka ascendant in Libra. So this is exactly what I was talking about when I said it's about commitment, but it's commitment of a different kind. First of all, you have to feel like the partner that you're with has the same core principles as you. Second of all, you have to believe that, you know, they have a plan working towards the same goal that you have. Because Vishaka is about bringing disparate elements together. And they're usually only brought together through a mutual goal. So that's why during the midweek, we need to feel like the people that we're associated with, they're on the same page as us. They have the same work ethic. They have the same drive. They have the same... It doesn't have to be in similar industries or in similar points of the world. It doesn't have to be in similar industries. I'll say that. But it does have to be... You know, we do have to have the same drive, the same work ethic, the same core ethics. Do you have a plan? And that's all I'm going to say for the midweek. Okay. Unless there's something else. Okay, no, there's nothing else. Let's move on to the end of the week. And for the end of the week, we have the three of discs, which is work. I sounded like a fucking horn. No, not even like a fucking horn. Like, you know, one of those, those blue birds. <laughs> no, no, that's not what it is. I sounded like a fucking goose. I sounded like, <laughs> I'm sorry, let me continue with the reading. <laughs> okay, so we got work. <laughs> Three of discs, all right? And then we've got the 10 of discs, which is wealth. All right. Notice that the ten of coins is, you know, related to the Kabbalah. But then what isn't? Jesus Christ. Western alchemy is a trip. But yeah. We've got the three of discs and the ten of discs. So there's lots of pragmatic energy. We are coming to the spring equinox. If we if we didn't enter the spring equinox. During the midweek, I haven't looked it up because it, it changes, it changes. So if we're not coming into the autumn equinox, during the midweek, towards the end of this week, we definitely come into the, the autumn equinox. And as we come into the autumn equinox, more emphasis becomes on, become, more emphasis is on harvest. Do you understand? 
So this is where we start to see the spoils of the work that we've done, the wealth of our work. This is where we start to see how our manifestations have panned out in earnest. And this is where we get to review how we've manifested these things into our lives, all right? We've got Purva Bajrapada Ascendant when this week comes to a close. It's in Purva Bajrapada Ascendant, okay? And that's all about how much in line we are with our free will and with our true core ethics. Have they manifested in our lives? What is the wealth of our works? Have they manifested in our lives? Are we dealing with the things that we've been given? Are we dealing with it well? Or are there things that we need to work on? You see, Venus Day and Saturn Day, Friday and Saturday are times for us to reevaluate exactly what we've brought into our lives. It's, you know, it's a time for us to reevaluate exactly what we've manifested and attracted into our lives. Now, there are some of you, again, because you're grateful for what you've got, you may find that in spite of some disappointments, you know, during the end of the week, you may find that a lot of what you've manifested, you're able to work with. And, you know, there are those of you who are dissatisfied with your lives that, you know, you may find that there are things to work with, but you don't want to work with them. So there's a lack of gratitude there. So really, this week, this whole week is about gratitude versus lack of gratitude. And that will affect how you perceive the wealth of your work. Okay? And also, what sacrifice... Sorry, that was my alarm. That was my alarm. Also, what sacrifices have you made up to now in order to get what you want? And are you happy with those sacrifices? If you're happy with those sacrifices, then the likelihood is, is that you are in line with spirit's desire for your life, which is great. That's that's the side you need to be on. But if you're not happy with the sacrifices that you've made, well, it might be time to come back to the drawing board. OK. Because you don't get anything without sacrifice. Like I said before, you just you just do not get anything without sacrifice, even at like a base level, because we live in a world of trade. One thing has to be traded for another. Spirit's going to want something and you're going to want something. Your ancestors and guys are going to want something and you're going to want something. Your, your angels and even so, if there are some of you working with demons, I'm not going to lie to you. There are some of you working with demons. Your angels are going to want something and your demons are going to want something. Yeah. And I know I shouldn't be reading for people who work with demons, but let's be real. Like, given what we know about alchemy, you know, there are all kinds of beings out there. But depending on what you've manifested, you could work with a certain type of entity and you have to decide whether or not what you give them is worth what they've given you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is the exchange worth it? Is the juice worth the squeeze? Is the wealth of your work, does the wealth of your work for you outweigh the cost of your work? Oof. A word, shit. Okay, so let's see what else is going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some of you are going to be very, very pleased with what you've got. Some of you are going to be very, very pleased because you've been enthusiastic about what it is that you've been manifesting. Whereas others of you are going to be like, yeah, I don't know, fam. I don't know, fam. <laughs> But if you're the second one, go back to the drawing board. If you're the first one, what else needs to be said? Just keep on doing what you're doing. That's it. You know what I mean? So with that in mind, i got to get to the notes for the end of the week. So we've got outdoor teamwork, retirement. Now, these, these notes are important. No, actually, no. I'm going to read the important notes later. So the normal ones, they're outdoor teamwork, retirement, craftsmanship, expertise, renovation. So there are changes to be made in the foundation of your life. I did say that 
like throughout this week so far from Sunday to Thursday, there are changes to be made from the foundation of your life and you start implementing them physically in the midweek. But um, towards the end of the week, it becomes more about physical work and less about emotion. So you have a plan and you are already implementing it during the midweek. And now towards the end of the week, you're focused on, on implementing that. Okay. So, yeah, so there are changes to be made. There are changes that you're going to make. They're not big at the moment, but the changes that you make now, they will lead to bigger opportunities and better opportunities later on. Okay. So, for the important notes, we've got family business, wealth created in a team, investing in a team. I see that there are certain alliances in your life. There are some of you that are going to resonate, resonate with this. There are certain alliances in your life that are going to come to, not going to come to fruition, but they're going to strengthen. It's not from an emotional level, though. It's more from a level of we fulfill each other's needs. We all have a role to play and we're all going to play that role to the best of our ability. We're not going to allow anything to get in the way of it because we have a plan. We have a focus and we're going to aim it towards attaining what we want. What is the common goal here? The common goal is this and this is what we're going to work towards and this is how we're going to do it on a practical level. Now, emotions will come and go. They'll be like, you know, first we might like the people that we're working with. The next minute we won't like the people that we're working with. But it's a familial setup. That doesn't necessarily mean it's family that you're working with. But what I mean is the nature of family is that it doesn't matter how you feel about each other. You're going to work with each other when it's something important. And this is the vibe that I get towards the end of the week for Friday and Saturday. Many of you regardless of whether or not you're on the grateful side or the ungrateful side, you will have alliances. And those alliances will be quite powerful in your life. But again, whether or not those alliances are towards your highest good, it really depends again on your attitude. If your attitude is of gratitude, then you will find that the wealth of your work is solid and abundant and rich and that you'll have plenty of plenty to work with with the people that are allied with you if you don't have an attitude of gratitude you you will find that you're abundant but you won't appreciate your abundance your mind will become more and more fixed towards vindictiveness and pettiness so the truth is is that like the team that you're surrounded by are a reflection of you and the wealth of your work. So towards the end of the week, we see the results of what we've done, but also the people in our lives from a physical level, they are reflective of exactly what we're trying to accomplish and whether or not that's actually a good idea. So be very, very mindful this week of what you bring into your lives. Okay, now, hmm. before I conclude the video, I've got to talk about the overall feelings of the week. Um, what I'm seeing is that many people are fearing the worst. That's on both sides. This is not specific to anybody. A lot of people are fearing the worst, but again, the reactions to that are different. This is not an easy week. I'm not going to lie to you. 17th to the 23rd is not an easy week for anybody. It's not just for me. I know I've got problems with my mum over here, but like it's it's not an easy week for anybody. It's not it's not awful, but it's like it's not it's not an easy week for many people. Do you understand what I'm saying? There's a lot to navigate and there's a lot of um, there's a lot of dirt that you have to turn into. That you have to turn into a floor somehow. You know, there's a lot of fertilizer that you 
there's a lot of crap that you have to turn into fertilizer so to speak so it's not going to be an easy week for anybody it's going to be quite rough but again um the difference is is in how people handle it and truth be told there are some people who handle it better than others not gonna lie all right is there anything else for the week i think that's it so um that's it for the 17th to the 23rd of September, 2023. Um, I am going to be filming the Autumn Equinox Pick a Card reading. And I am going to be doing the full moon in September at some point during this week. If everything goes well with my mum, that's exactly what's going to happen, okay? So, yeah, that's, that's going to be it for now. I love you guys so much. Peace and blessings. Mm -hmm. Bye bye.